It's no secret that listening to Marjorie Taylor Greene speak is uh, akin to nails on a chalkboard for most people. So that is of course why Marjorie Taylor Greene has a new tactic. You know, she wants people to show up and hear her speak, but she doesn't want them walking out halfway through because they're tired of the conspiracy theories and the shrill sound of her voice. So what the campaign has had to resort to is holding raffles for anybody willing to actually sit through the entire speech, because of course you have to be present to win. So you go to see Marjorie Taylor Greene, you enter your name for a raffle ticket and oh boy, this is great, but I got to sit here and then, but then I get my reward, right? So what is it? Is it a brand new assault rifle? Is it a new car, a new refrigerator? Nope. Take a look. Here is the grand prize. This was from an event Marjorie Taylor Greed did within the last week. So here's what you get if you can stomach an entire Marjorie Taylor Green speech. Take a look. First drawing is for a $25 Cracker Barrel gift card. Four three seven zero eight eight zero. A $25 Cracker Barrel gift card, folks. I hope it's worth it. Um, I mean, I guess that'll get you a meal at Cracker Barrel, maybe a couple little tchotchkes from their, their gift store there. Um, but 25 bucks basically to sit through an entire Marjorie Taylor Greene event in what looked to be a rundown school building. I, I don't know. I can't tell. And furthermore, in addition to the horrible prize, cause I don't think $25 is enough compensation to actually sit through an entire Marjorie Taylor Green speech. But can we look at that podium? Do we, do we have a picture of the podium? We could show people here. Look at how gross this thing is. Like this is what Marjorie Taylor Green, just a few minutes prior to that clip I showed you, she was speaking at this thing. I mean, it looks like they literally just pulled it out of the dumpster and didn't even bother to wipe all the garbage off of it. That is disgusting. <laughs> I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene likes to think she's this big popular figure, right? I mean, she is a household name at this point. Let's be honest about that. And that's the best you could do. You, you pulled a podium from outside, probably sitting on the curb with a sign that said free on it. And you're like, Hey, we should get that for Marjorie. She'll like it. I mean, somebody could have at least taken a Lysol wipe to it and cleaned the outside of it so that it didn't look like she was speaking from behind garbage. But I guess that is also fitting because that's pretty much what Marjorie Taylor Greene is herself. She's trash. So speaking at a podium made of trash that looks like trash is right up her alley. But here's the thing. You also noticed in that clip, of course, at the end, you know, the, the people clapping and cheering for the $25. Woo. Yeah. We, yeah. It sounded like there may have been a dozen and a half, maybe two dozen people in the audience. So we're, what gives, as I said, she's a household name. Why, why was this not in a packed auditorium? I mean, she's spoken at CPAC. She's spoken at turn turning, spoken at turning point USA. She has walked out on stage to thousands of people and fireworks and all kinds of pyrotechnics and big monitors behind her. So what the hell is she doing first? She goes on public access TV earlier this week. That looks like it was filmed with a potato. Now she's speaking in an abandoned haunted house in front of a piece of garbage. Could it be, and this is the main point of all of this that Marjorie Taylor Greene is not actually as popular as she would like to think. That's what I believe. And I think her recent appearances, right? Her solo appearances when it's not a part of a big event or when she's not, you know, going on right before Donald Trump, nobody cares. Nobody actually cares about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Nobody actually likes her. And sure. I've seen the video footage of her. I don't know if it was CPAC or turning point. There was a line half a mile long. It looked like of people waiting to get their picture with her. Sure. But even if she had a line of 500 people, that's 500 people from all over the United States. And I'm willing to bet exactly zero of them were actually from her district. So they can't even vote for her. Marjorie Taylor Greene, along with people like Matt Gates and Jim Jordan, um, even Lauren Boebert to a degree, 
The reason they're in power is because they're in safe red districts. And this is honestly the case for a lot of Republicans out there. You know, pretty much all of them from Alabama. They're in safe red districts, but they get shoved in our faces so much that we're led to believe they're more popular than they actually are. Because when they go out on the national stage, either by themselves or not with a big ticket Republican coming up behind them, like Donald Trump, they can't draw the crowds. The crowds don't show up. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates proved that last summer with their failed, which nearly bankrupted their campaigns, a uh, little tour of the country. People didn't show up because they don't have broad appeal. And I'm telling you that as a bit of a, a positive note, we talk about these people because they are genuine threats to our country, but they're only going to continue to be threats while they're in Congress. They have no broad appeal to win a national office outside of their district. I don't even think they could win a statewide election in their own state. So yes, we have to treat these people as serious threats because they are, but we also have to remember if they try to step outside their comfort zone of their deep red districts, they will fail and they will fail miserably. Hey everyone, this is Aspen. And did you know that for the low, low cost of $0 per day, you can subscribe to the Fair and Balanced YouTube channel. We also encourage you to like, comment, and share. But again, click that subscribe button and help Aspen oh, not be so grumpy.